geometric turnings is where woodworking and topography come together. Um, I have here a shape. This is a rolling pin designed by Rudy O'Solnik. Uh, and uh, in this, he puts several different types of wood and some plywood to boot. And when he cut uh, the shape of the rolling pin, the topography of the rolling pin intersects the straight or the flat planes of the wood and creates all sorts of uh, different shapes. Let me, uh, let me come close here and I will show you. This is, uh, this is Rudy's rolling pin. As you can see, he just glued up layers of wood, cut it at an angle, uh, the, the, uh, the, the turning stock at an angle, and then when he, he went and turn, turned it, he, get, he got some nice ovals and different shapes. Look at, the, uh, look at that beautiful concentric circle right there on the, uh, on the top of the, uh, on the knob of the rolling pin. That beautiful. Um, Rudy used to be uh, uh, the head of the uh, wood turning or the woodworking uh, uh, section of Berea College. Uh, great, great turner. Um, I've got, I, I took Rudy's um, idea and I uh, uh, made slight, uh, uh, a, a, a really, really slight uh, modification on these rolling pins so that they will work with uh, what we call our cone cutter on um, uh, on the uh, on our uh, lathe duplicator. Now, the, you can, of course, turn the turn rolling pins without a lathe duplicator. But if you're setting up for Christmas, and that's what this is uh, is all about, the lathe uh, uh, the lathe duplicator makes an excellent uh, way to uh, save some time. And the cone cutter cuts really fast. It actually has a cutting rim which shears the wood rather than scrapes it, so you get a very smooth cut. This is um, is a surface that I have not touched with a piece of sandpaper. This is straight as it comes off the cone cutter. And j as you can see, it's, uh, it's wonderfully smooth. It just takes a little bit of uh, work with uh, some 120 or 150 grit, and you, you get it down to where it's ready for a finish. Now, this particular piece was just a simple, uh, I, we simply assembled some triangles of, of, of wood. Actually, you could, have, you could have done it with rectangles. We happened to do it with triangles because we were, uh, we were uh, had all the time in the world. So, um, but uh, you put there's there's walnut on the two diagonals, maple on the other two diagonals, and the uh, uh, the little eighth inch uh, of wood in between it is bloodwood, and it really sets it really sets it off and uh, creates creates some interesting lines. Uh, here's uh, here's one. <laughs> Look at this. No, this isn't a rolling pin yet, but it will be. Uh, this is a, a piece of wood that I uh, uh, drilled and put uh, dowels of different species of wood, walnut. Uh, well, actually, I didn't use walnut dowels because this is a piece of walnut, but I used cherry, maple, and oak uh, dowels and uh, inserted them in the wood. Um, and as you, can, as you can see, it looks like a... Uh, uh, a piece of turning stock with warts. Now you you'd have to skin off all these dowels first on the on the bandsaw before you turn them. But once you turn them, you get kind of an interesting effect. Uh, here's here's the piece of wood turned again. This is this is not with a finish on it, or it's just straight off the uh, the cone cutter. And as you can see, uh, it looks like I've been smashing little pizzas with uh, with this. This is the uh, uh, the woodworking equivalent of a lava lamp. Uh, really, really ugly. The um, uh, one of the uh, neater things that we've made in this experiment is this. Uh, you can you can see uh, the center, and I'll show you I'll show you the the piece we glued up uh, with uh, triangles and rectangles, uh, making a, a what is called an Ohio star. Uh, what quilters call an Ohio star out of out of walnut. There's walnut, cherry, maple uh, in this, and once again, the topography intersecting the flat plains creates some some very very beautiful shapes. Um, this 
this is is the glue up. You can see you can see it right there. Um, the finally, finally, we I've got. Uh, we did we did a glue up like this, where we um, where we glued up um, uh, several triangles to make pinwheels. Uh, of course, these were in long strips, and then we cut them into three quarter inch slices. Uh, we took these slices, drilled holes in them, five eighths inch holes, and stacked them on a dowel. Uh, then put a top and a bottom block on this, or right and left block if you want to call it, hold it horizontally. And when we glued these up, when Drew glued them up actually, he turned the, the, these so that these little pinwheels appear to spiral up the um, up, up the column. Uh, what we got was this. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, it's kind of like a pixelated barber pole. Anyway, the the uh, uh, it makes a. Uh, it makes a, a, a nice pattern. Of course, you can you can change the pattern by changing the the, the arrangement of the of pinwheels if you want. Uh, just to give just to show you what it would look like if we hadn't uh, cut the um, uh, if we hadn't cut these into slices and stacked it, you just would have gotten a nice striped uh, cylinder like that. Um, all of this, all of this. Oh, oh, I, I nearly forgot. This is a. This is a piece. I, I, I love this. It looks like somebody's been uh, uh, rolling out eggs. Um, the, uh, the, this is a, a, a piece, and this is finished. This is something that Drew did a long time ago. Uh, he, of course, the, 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 the uh, first glue up was just a, uh, a piece of, of walnut with a sandwich between two pieces of maple. That's a walnut plug in both ends. And then uh, what uh, Drew did was he drilled at a very steep angle a one-inch hole and put a one-inch walnut, um, uh, walnut dowel in there uh, on both sides, okay? Uh, uh, cut it off, turned it, and then drilled another uh, hole, this one three-quarters of an inch, and put a, um, a maple dowel in the middle of that. And got this uh, interesting-looking oval in the in the side of the rolling. All of this, all of this, nothing more than uh, geometry and topography. Uh, however, there is some woodworking, and that's what we're going to get get to here. I'm going to show you uh, a little bit about how this uh, this cone cutter works on the um, on the lathe. If we uh, can get over here, I'm going to set up. Get this in, in place here. Nice thing about this particular setup is if you have one of these lathe duplicators, you know, once you turn one of these, one of these um, uh, rolling pins, and you like the shape that you've got, then you can just mount it up here and uh, duplicate that same shape over and over and over again. Um, now, one of the, one of the things that I want to caution you about when you when you uh, um, when you uh, do these turnings and these glue ups is to let the glue dry completely. Most glues gain about 95% of their strength over the first 24 hours. And you really, really want to let them do that. Um, if, you, if you don't, if you don't, this thing could fly apart on you on the lathe. So do not, do, let me repeat that, and, and I'll tell you why I'm going to re repeat it in a minute. Do not let simply let this thing rest in the clamps for a couple hours and then pull it out and try to turn it. Okay, 
I know, and this is, this is a true story, I know of a person who was, who was turning a large bowl. Um, he was in a hurry. It was Christmas time. Uh, and he put the, it on the lathe. Uh, he had the shopsman set at much too high a speed so that when he turned it apart, uh, uh, on, the, 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 uh, the stock literally exploded on him. A, pea, a large piece hit him in the chest, concussed, concussed his heart, and it stopped. <clears throat> so the, this, uh, the, just let the glue dry, guys. 24 hours. Um, I'm going to... Um, I'm going to cut this with the cone cutter. You can see I have a round follower on the top of this um, uh, uh, on the top of this cutter that is the same shape as the cone. I've adjusted the cone so it is just beneath. I mean, just a smidge, maybe a, a 32nd of an inch beneath the axis of rotation. Um, the uh, let me put. Uh, my eyeballs on, and uh, you can see I've been chewing away at this already. I'll do another section and show you how the cone cutter works here. There, you can you can see the the shoulder of the uh, of the uh, uh, beginning to evolve there, the shoulder of the rolling pin. Um, there's something that that you should know about uh, about this. If you want that crisp line there at that shoulder, you want to to work so that it comes together as you move the cone cutter. In other words, cut the cylinder of the rolling pin like this, and then cut the curve of the shoulder like that, so that the two motions come together and form that point. If you just simply trace the, uh, the cylinder of the rolling pin and then plunge down and cut the shoulder, it will round over the, uh, the shoulder and it won't be that nice crisp line. Uh, a couple of, uh, of, of other things is, is uh, uh, as this cone cutter gets dull, you just have to loosen the, the Allen screw that holds it and turn it uh, slightly to get a sharp edge. You can see here, as I, as I put it against the wood and turn, how exactly how it shears. Here, I'll let, uh, I'll let uh, Drew come in close on that. So you can see the shearing action. And as you can see, it does a, it does a really good job with, with uh, hardwoods. Cuts it, uh, I mean, I was going very fast. I was actually hogging the wood. And um, the... Uh, uh, and as you can see, it's relatively smooth with no with no tear outs. It also does a uh, a good job uh, with the end grain, like you see here on the shoulder. That shoulder is nice and and smooth with uh, no tear outs. It's really a 
it's really a, um, uh, a, a no, you know, no thought required. It uh, does a good, does a good job of roughing out these uh, uh, these surfaces. Now the the modification I made to Rudy's original design was to change the shoulder and the neck uh, slightly so that it, the entire piece could be done with this one uh, with this one cutter and follower without having to to change over to different uh, cutters. Once you once you get your rolling pin uh, smooth and done now. Uh, I, I will do a little hand work on these. I'll probably break down the um, uh, the lathe duplicator uh, when I've got enough of these made. Put them on, sand them, take a parting tool and knock off the uh, uh, knock off the ends, and then sand the ends. Um, once once they have been uh, uh, sanded, uh, you'll want to put a finish on them. Most of the uh, of the rubbing finishes and rubbing varnishes like tongue oil. Uh, Watco oil uh, will uh, are m only mildly toxic when they're uh, in the can. Of course, you wouldn't want to drink them. <coughs> mildly toxic doesn't mean non-toxic. Uh, but uh, once they once they solidify and form a matrix, uh, they cannot be broken down by your digestive juices. So so they are all by, by all intents and purposes benign at that point. So you can use a, a, a rubbing oil on them. Some people prefer to use uh, uh, natural oils, such as uh, mineral oil or uh, linseed oil, something that uh, won't go rancid. And you can use those also. Uh, I myself will probably just give them a nice coat of wax um, and uh, let, it, let it go with that. Uh, wood has a, na a natural antibacterial agent. And, uh, there is, and since these are going to be used to roll out pastries, they'll be coming in contact with plenty of, oil, of oils over their lifetime. And with that, I'll start getting set up for uh, some scroll sawing. Meanwhile, uh, send me your questions.